Michigan Magazine is kept on the road by our many Michigan friends. Cops and Donuts Bakery, downtown Clare. A winning combination. Cops and Donuts. The Michigan-made rebounding mailbox pool. Never again worry about the winter snowplow taking out your mailbox with this ingenious rebounding pool. Your mailbox takes a hit and keeps coming back year after year. Call now or visit their website, toughmailboxes.com. Rose City Drug, just south of the Rose City city limits at 2640 North M33. Featuring a state-of-the-art, completely automated and extremely accurate computer-filled prescription process. Here at Rose City Drug, we're a family-owned and operated for over 20 years. We offer fast and friendly service. And we always take the extra step to make sure your needs are fulfilled. The Cedar Tavern and Grill of Lockton, where friends come to meet friends and families come for delicious food and a wholesome atmosphere. Come relax with your favorite beverage or bring the crew for a great meal and live entertainment. It's happening now at the Cedar of Lockton. This week in Michigan Magazine, we take to the skies over Gogebe County as we spend the morning with the Ironbirds, an organization dedicated to public service and enjoyment of experimental and unusual aircraft. Then we're preparing for all the upcoming county fairs across the good old USA with a return visit to the Ogemaw County Fair and the big cow and goat celebrity milking competition. It's all coming up on this edition of Michigan Magazine. It's back and making memories for a new generation. The Rustic Inn of Lewiston, now open with hot, delicious food, your favorite beverage, and an atmosphere that'll keep you coming back to make new memories and new friends. The new Rustic Inn on Red Oak Road, just south of Lewiston. Vacation. Don't make the planning of it more than what you're trying to get away from. At NorthernMichiganCabinRentals.com, you can choose from over 2,500 cabins, cottages, lodges, resorts, lakefront vacation home rentals, and more. Whatever experience you're looking for, from rustic to luxury and everything in between. No more rustling with telephone books. No more endless internet searches. Just one site with over 2,500 Northern Michigan destinations. NorthernMichiganCabinRentals.com the vast wilderness of Michigan's Upper Peninsula is no secret. From east to west, roads will take you hundreds of miles into some of the most beautiful, undeveloped country anywhere. For the outdoor enthusiasts, you'll think you've discovered a piece of heaven. There's hunting, fishing, camping, hiking, swimming, diving, scores of beautiful natural waterfalls, and some of the best skiing in the country. Snowmobiling you just won't believe. And to top it all off, some of the friendliest and hospitable people alive. All that is asked of you as a visitor to God's country is to respect the area as they do. Leave it as you found it. We at Michigan Magazine have found a special type of person north of the Mackinac Bridge, and that's what draws us northward to the UP for extended journeys at least once a year. We've made friends throughout the Upper Peninsula, but it's the Ontonagon and Gogebe County area in the far west where we've made some very special friends. Here in the Paulding, Wakefield, and Ironwood areas, we've discovered some extremely interesting stories to tell. If you drove to this area by car from the Lower Peninsula, you had taken nearly eight hours to drive straight through. Quite a drive. We were delighted, though, to discover that if you had the opportunity to fly the trip from the central part of Lower Michigan would take about two hours. And to make flying into this part of the UP more tempting, it's nice to know that the Gogebic County Airport can handle all types of aircraft, from the small engine ultralights right up to commercial aircraft, with regular commercial flights by major airlines scheduled. So, now trips into the furthest reaches of the UP are only a couple of hours away from most parts of the Lower Peninsula. While visiting the Gogebic County Airport, we talked with Joe, the airport manager, who filled us in on the available facilities here. The airport has 1,100 acres. Mm -hmm. uh, our airstrip is uh, east-west, 6,500 feet by 150 feet wide. Mm. And uh, we can accommodate all the way up to 727s. Uh, how yeah. long have you had a runway that big to accommodate? Is this something, a fairly in, new project, is it? In, or? in 1978, they expanded which was, used to be a 5,400-foot strip when they had Convair 580s flying in here. Mm -hmm. And then uh, when Republic started coming in, mm -hmm. they had uh, DC-9s, and then the runway had to be expanded in those years, and they spent uh, nearly $7 million to update uh, 
the new runway, mm -hmm. land acquisitions, and, and the zoning for the approaches. We have all the accommodations, all the nav aids here. And a beautiful hangar facility here, too. Well, this hangar here was built in 1938 in WPA days. Oh, really? And you can see the construction of it. Mm -hmm. and after 50-some uh, years later, our doors still work right the way they're supposed to, yeah. and, and the construction of it is all made out of natural field stone that they picked up all around here. Uh, next year, uh, our, our project will be taxiways and aprons. We'll update those. Mm -hmm. And the airport itself, the county, we're uh, building more and more hangars. Mm -hmm. uh, about five years ago, there were about five base aircraft here, and now we have 18. We're growing every year, every year, building more hangars. And uh, the businesses around here are using the airport more and more. See a beautiful facility here, and a lot of special events happen here. We've got fly-ins, we've got uh, the young eagles, and all sorts of neat things happening here too. So you're pretty well community involved too. Right, right. We, and we, we try to get uh, more and more and more people involved in the airport mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. today it's you know it's a viable link to any activity that's going on now, especially in the winter time. Mm -hmm. We have a few planes sitting here now in the summer, but in the winter time, we've got 50, 60 of them here sitting on the ground for a weekend ski. Mmm, I see. Uh, even with even with our 150 plus inches of snow <laughs> in the winter time, uh, you know, in the last three years, we've been closed about eight hours. Really, is that it? Yeah. My we, God. we have all the modern facilities of uh, snow removal. Well, we spend a lot of time out here in the wintertime. A year-round airport right. here in the right. North Country. Well, Joel, thank you very much for appearing in Michigan well, Magazine. Well, thank and we'll you. be around and looking at yeah. a little bit more of what's I happening here at the okay, airport. Fine. Thank you. You're welcome. The area is rightfully proud of this fine airport, providing the area with modern air transportation to the Upper Peninsula. Even while we visited, a LifeLink helicopter made use of the refueling facilities to continue a critical hospital transfer to Minnesota. Interest in aviation is keen in this part of the UP. It's encouraged by a local group called the Ironbirds. Juan, current president of the Ironbirds, explains. The organization of the Ironbirds has been established about two years ago. Mm -hmm. and, uh, like I said before, we have about 65 members. That's a, you've only got a few here as a representative, but right here, we've got yes. a lot more uh, Quite people involved more. in it. Right, it's a year-on organization, do a lot of things during the winter. You bet. Uh, in the winter time, we do uh, some flying, yeah, the, mm -hmm. it's the ultralights, and we got skis, and <laughs> and uh, like John Kappel here, he has uh, a nice uh, T-Bird ultralight, and okay. he has uh, skis that he flies all the time with. Mm -hmm. it. We've got an ultralight, the Quicksilver. The Quicksilver, yeah. Tell us a little bit about that. The Quicksilver, that's a... Uh, uh, it's an ultra high weights about 270 pounds. Uh -huh. It's a two-seater. Uh -huh. It's supposed to lift 780 pounds. It's supposed to? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, as, as of today, I haven't taken any, anyone with me. Okay. Due to the insurance problem. Right, so, yeah, right. So, so we'll just watch you up there if you could. So I'll, I'll take my uh, ultra light off and give you a little demonstration. Okay, let's see. What do you have to do first before you get involved in an ultra light? Anything? Well, first safety of all, you, yes, uh, safety. You always check uh, all your harness. Uh, you check all your uh, all tie down to make sure that nothing is loose mm -hmm. make sure that you're safe up there because it's, when you fly ultralight you gotta especially the wind the mm -hmm. wind is a big factor in ultra light mm -hmm. right? how is today look for today flying? is perfect yeah because uh, even though we have a low ceiling but the wind is very as you can see the wind sacks is down so okay let's yeah. see what we have here a uh, little uh, maybe explanation of uh, what well yeah we have you have a three axis control like a regular aircraft Mm -hmm. Except this one is uh, controlled by spoilers if you want to turn, you know, the spoilers on top of the wing. I see. And it's just like the B-52, they got the same system. My. The spoilers. Uh -huh. And uh, you got, what I got here is a 440 uh, Kawasaki engine. Mm -hmm. Most aircraft got a uh, Rotax engine. Mm -hmm. And uh, you got a 52-inch prop. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically you got, you know, all the... Uh, a tri uh, tricycle uh, landing gear, uh -huh. and you uh, hold about six gallons of fuel. And the propeller is in the back. Uh, six the, gallons. This is a pusher. 
Oh, do you burn about three gallons an hour? Three gallons an hour. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. not bad. No, and, not too bad. Uh, if you run out of gas, can you? Uh, you can glide. You, can, you got a nine to one ratio of gliding. Nine so, to one ratio. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a, that has happened. So. Has it? Oh, okay. Yes. Uh, <laughs> you have to have, have, I'll suddenly find some area to land. Uh, they can land pretty much uh, in. Uh, uh, the yes, sense. open fields. You always uh, when you're flying a couple of thousand feet up, you're always keeping an eye for uh, open road or open field mm -hmm. uh, in case something just, just happened with your engine. Yes. Yeah, just normally it's a sixth sense you develop to look for you fields. Betcha, all yeah. the it's a matter, okay. of <laughs> yeah, matter, matter of safety. Matter of safety for your own. How high have you had this? The highest for uh, about 4,500 feet. Ooh. But you can go up to 10,000 feet. My yeah. gosh. Yes. The winds change though from layer to layer. Yeah, it does. Yeah, so a lot of times you you uh, check the weather briefing just okay. to make sure. Juan's enthusiasm for aviation and the Ironbirds was evident, as it was among all the Ironbirds that were there that day. Included among the Ironbirds members are a few local World War II heroes, like John Koppel, who flew P-38s in 50 missions, seeing a lot of action over Africa. And Sandy, an ace pilot who flew a hurricane aircraft in over 400 sorties. And there was Bob Carley, who flew SBD dive bombers for the Navy during the war for three years. Many Ironbirds are pilots, some have retired, but are still interested in the main thrust of the organization, that being to spread the interests of the world of flight. Other members we met that day included Clayton Randall, a veteran pilot with 20 years of flight experience, piloting 172s and an antique air coupe. And there's Bernie Jacobson, who flies in ultralight, a sharp Quicksilver GT400. Bernie, like most of the other Ironbirds, has been with the group since their beginnings over two years ago. The members are extremely proud of their involvement in the Young Eagles program, a program developed by an organization called the Experimental Aircraft Association, which was founded in 1953 to welcome young people into the world of aviation. Pilots fly into the airport to answer questions from young eagles who range in age from 8 to 17. The young eagles are then given a ride in an actual aircraft. There are approximately 100 young eagles in the Gogebic County area. In another interesting note, we found that Ironbirds, John Koppel and his son John, also are involved in aviation on a daily basis. We're loggers, we uh, cruise timber, mm -hmm. pound trees, and mm -hmm. plant our roads, mm -hmm. all out of the airplane. Mm -hmm. It's a uh, two-seater, is it? Or yours? Yeah, it's two-seater. So you and John go up there and you do a little work at the same sure. time. Sure. You say it's work, but you have a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. fun work. Yeah. It's fun work. To fly over the beautiful countryside of the Upper Peninsula is awe-inspiring. And speaking of awe-inspiring sights, from the Gogebic County Airport, you can see one of the most inspirational and captivating points of interest. That being the Copper Peak Ski Jump. Ironbird Bob Carley explains. Copper Peak is the only ski flying hill uh, in the United States and Western Hemisphere. Uh, it's the uh, largest artificial ski jumping hill in the world. Mm -hmm. And we get ski flyers from all over the, the world. The hill record is 500 and I think it's 22 feet now, 522. And that was set last year by this really? young kid from Austria. So now you know just how accessible and beautiful the furthest reaches of the UP are. Within a couple of hours, you too can be in God's country via air. A big thanks to the Gogebe County Airport and the Ironbirds for sharing that day with us and for making us honorary members of such a great organization. Michigan Magazine is being brought to you in part by Cops and Donuts Bakery Downtown Clare, what began as a crazy idea among nine police officers to purchase the historic Clare City Bakery, quickly became an international phenomenon, carrying out a Michigan tradition with delicious donuts, pies, pastries, breads, original coffee, and more, plus a full menu at the new adjacent Traffic Stop Diner. Downtown Clare, a winning combination, Cops and Donuts. Experience the beauty, artistry, and taste of Northern Michigan. Come to Amish Country Natural Products on Mount Tom Road, north of Mile, just off M33. From arts and crafts to fresh foods and vegetables, all natural, all local, all good. Stop by and get acquainted with Amish Country Natural Products, 1454 North Mount Tom Road, Mile. 
County Fair time is a great time throughout the country. It's an American tradition for the whole family. It's when city meets country. Like the Ogemaw County Fair Celebrity Cow and Goat Milking Competition. Today, it would truly give those city folk a taste of the old daily farm tradition of milking the farm goats and cows before the advent of modern milking methods. We met beforehand with a few of the celebrity milkers to hear some of their pre-event strategy. Oh yeah, heck yeah. Have you got any, uh, you guys got any uh, strategy for this competition? Uh, not really. <laughs> for the most well, part, no, not really. Any practice uh, or just... Uh, a lot of watching, lot of not watching, too much okay. hands-on. So all, of, okay, guys. all of Mike's neighbors are Amish, <laughs> uh -huh. and okay. so he's well-versed. Yeah. Okay, okay. The finer, uh, the finer <laughs> etiquette, the finer uh, product. Exactly, okay. yes, sir. Okay. Yes. Good luck, you guys. All right, thank, thank you. you. What have you uh, done to prepare for this big event here? Well, I've had so many listeners like Shelly here bring me um, little squeeze toys. Okay. I've had people recommend tips like putting a, a milk flask in my pants. Okay. Um, but basically just working out with a broom and the little squeeze toys and okay. limbering my fingers. You're practicing or what is it that you've been doing here to get ready for this big celebrity milk off? You know what? I didn't have anything prepared in terms of uh, practice. So I've just been, uh, you know, squeezing... Uh, Balloons and things like that. I figured that would get my the muscles in my you know and golfing. A lot okay, of golfing works too. Yeah. Help. You know you get that good grip on there. Then that see. Oh, uh, you like that? You got it. That's good grip. All the competitors put on a good show. But the one urban cowgirl, Chris Schaefer of 103 Country of Gladwin, Michigan, is the one who will be talking about this traumatic encounter for generations to come. Hey, again, my name is Alex. I'm from Germany. I'm hanging at. I have to sit down that close to his leg. Thanks so much for coming out to the fair. See, do I have to get that close to him? One of the best fairs in the country. Can I just reach? But the state, everybody here is going to have a fantastic job. Last year, they set all kinds of records. We'd be hard pressed to find him. Over 50,000 people that attend the fair that they do here at the Oklahoma Fair. So, uh, thanks everybody for coming out, and it's just a fantastic fair. If you've never been here before, you're in for a great surprise. And, uh, they do have These things are all wet. <laughs> you guys all set? <laughs> oh, it's creepy feeling. She's not. You, you can give me the thumbs up. Chris, you gotta get a, a little closer. No. No, I'm close enough. Legs are huge. All right, on your mark. Get set. Go. Oh, 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 it's like leather. Smell left in this thing. Well, the only clear-cut winner in this year's competition were the spectators. The competitors left with a little more humility and respect for the pioneering American farmer. Mary, how did it go? Hey, Barry, it was fantastic. I did not expect to have to go milk a goat. Uh -huh. But in the spirit of everyone else was so willing, I think I should have been. I tell you what, it came out really well, and the volunteerism and the things just come together here at the fair. It's something that uh, you guys stress, isn't it? The volunteer and the work that goes into each and every fair, and it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun, and without the volunteers, which there are thousands that work not only during fair week, but all year long. Mm -hmm. What would you say to people across the country who haven't been to a fair yet? If you haven't been to the Ogemaw County Fair, where we have Thousands of trees, paved walkways, the best home-cooked meals on the face of the earth. There's no other fair in the land like the Ogemaw County Fair. Well, you can't say it any better than that. Thanks, Mary. Thank you, Mary. Hale Hardware, your do-it center at Hale, Michigan. Much more than a regular hardware store, providing everything you need for whatever your project is, along with a knowledgeable sales staff to get her done. Serving Northern Michigan since 1946. Hale Hardware, south of M65 at Ainsley in Hale. Clemex Sales and Service on Mapes Road, west of Mile, your complete recreational vehicle sales and service connection. Visit their beautiful showroom of new and pre-owned ATVs, lawnmowers, power equipment, snowmobiles, utility vehicles, and more. Clemex Sales and Service is also the home of the American-made Victory Motorcycle Line on display at Clemex on Mapes Road, Mile.
There's adventures around every turn. And if you're looking for something for you and the entire family, be sure and visit the Cedar Valley Golf Course and the Wild Frontier Fun Park on Weaver Road in Cummins. Play 18 holes of world-class golf at the beautifully maintained golf course, Cedar Valley. Tucked away amongst the hardwoods of northern Michigan and at the same time, let others in the family enjoy themselves at the adjacent Wild Frontier Fun Park with carnival rides, a batting cage, bumper cars, and a 19-hole mini golf course. Check them out online. It's a northern Michigan destination. Well, thanks for joining us along those back roads. Wow, July's coming to a close and the days are getting a bit shorter, but there's still time to make those summer memories if you do it now. Get up and get out. So far this summer, we've made plenty of memories. We're getting ready to share with you. Some of you were even a part of it. And we thank you for joining us. It was great meeting you. A reminder to follow us on Twitter and all those other social media outlets. Drop by thespiritofmichigan.com to hook up. No phrase of the week this week. We're busy drawing names and awarding prizes. I'm Barry Stutzman. Till we meet again, have a great week. We'd like to thank all those that help keep Michigan Magazine on the road. Cops and Donuts Bakery, downtown Clare. A winning combination. Cops and Donuts. Hingeman Acres, canoe livery and resort on M33 just north of Mayo. Catering to the outdoor enthusiasts. Cabins, canoes, kayaks, rafts and more. Daytime or overnight trips along the world famous Asabo River. A family getaway for over 75 years. Rose Valley Winery on Beachwood Road in Rose City. See what thousands are raving about, creating a delicious variety of award-winning Michigan wines. Stop by and taste for yourself. The taste of Michigan is yours at Rose Valley Winery.